Pedro from EMP Reacts, I'm here today with Magnus Carlson to talk about Heart Healer, the opera, the metal opera by Magnus Carlson. How are you doing? I'm fine. Very fine. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for taking the time today to chat about your latest achievement. I'm not even calling it a project. I'm really calling this an achievement because it really feels like you've been <laughs> really pouring a lot of work into this. Yeah, it was. It was fun, but a lot of work. Uh, how long was this project in the making? And at any point in time, did you think this was never going to see the light of day? Uh, I think I worked on it for a year, maybe. And uh, in the beginning, it was really easy and fun. And I was really into doing all this orchestra arrangement and stuff. And But when, to, when I came to the... To the, to the singers and lyrics and story, I started to feel it was a bit, it wasn't like writing a normal album with songs. This is a story, you know, and everything has to connect and it has to suit the singers and everything. So that, that was uh, yeah, harder than normal, I would say. Yeah, without the concept, without the storytelling aspect of the album, uh, everything else kind of falls flat. So it plays a huge role in how the listener will appreciate the work that you put together. Th did you see, th did you start to see the vision as you were working through it or, or it took you a long time to finally start to see the forest from the trees, if you will? I just started with the music. I I've always been into uh, like the soundtracks and all you know, classical music. And I really wanted to do something with a uh, orchestra sound and still still have it, you know, like metal. And I asked my record company Frontiers and they say, yes, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, also I thought a lot about, I, I worked with a lot of singers, a lot of great singers, but not so many female singers. I thought this was a great opportunity to do something with uh, more female singers and uh, but I didn't have the story. I didn't have the lyrics. And uh, so they, that came after. So. How was the process of creating the story and creating th those lyrics? Uh, was, was it a, a difficult one to go through to match the songs that you had to create it to the story that you're... I, mean, I find that these are two worlds that hard to kind of bring them together, you know? Yeah, it was. I, I, I first had a story and uh, then I had to think of... 10 songs to or 10 chapters or what you want to call it. I, I like to think of the album as long, one long song, you know, and different parts instead of 10 or 11 songs. And yeah, then I have to think about the singers too, who can sing what and uh, uh, a couple of them I haven't, I haven't worked with them before. So I wasn't sure is this okay with the key or uh, how, how will it sound? So it was a lot of thinking, a lot, a lot of changing and fixing in the lyrics. And, uh, but it, it worked out, but um, yeah, I, I, I had to think. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, normally I just write and you know, wow, this is great. But this is a, a thinking men's record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to concentrate. Uh, and the worst part was because of the, um, I was thinking to get a, you know, um, a demo singer because to sing all the female parts because normally I sing all the demos myself. But I didn't have a time and because of the COVID and everything, it was hard to make it happen. So I had to sing all the demos myself. And uh, you can imagine it's a bit too high for a guy. So I, I, it sounded like uh, Bee Gees metal or something. And <laughs> I, I was really scared sending out the demos, to, especially to the singers that I haven't met, that I don't know, you know, they hear a strange guy singing. In, <laughs> but they... They got the vibe. I explained to them, this is what I want. And uh, you should be the evil one. And you should be the nice one here. And it, it turned out great. Seven different vocalists. I mean, you mentioned already seven different female singers on this album, seven different vocalists. What made these seven uh, the perfect ones for this record? Uh, they are all great, of course. But that wasn't enough. They have. They have to be uh, very different, different kind of voices. Like, uh, for example, you have Nora with the big, powerful, po powerful metal voice, and uh, you have the uh, Jomna that is more classical, and you have the soft ones. 
because if I had seven singers that sounded like Nora, I think it would be quite boring and hard to follow who's who, you know? Cool. And yeah. yeah, but now they are very different and that's, that makes it cool. Was it difficult for you to find the right space and perhaps better than the right space, the right character for each one of them? Be because they all have their own personality. Like you said, they all have their own tone, their own delivery. They have yeah. some similarities, but they have some differences. So how did you assign the characters uh, to, to them? Yeah, I, I listen a lot to their, their main bands and, or, or what they did the last years and how they sound and how they can sound. And I also try to explain a little when I send the song, say, if you want to sing it in this way. And, uh, but I think I, I work a lot on the demos. So you, the demos almost, it sounds like a finished album so they can really hear the vibe if the if the music is uh, aggressive they follow the music and uh, if it's very very calm they follow it so i think it makes it easier because of course i can't be in the studio like a producer and tell them when they are recording but they, I, i'm so used to this and they are pros they really know how to do it and uh, I'm really happy with the result, but of course it, it's a risk. It could go really bad too, but uh, no one had to, you know, sing again or do something different. It was the first take and it was great. When I saw the names uh, of the seven singers, uh, I was blown away by, I mean, first of all, the quality of, of singers that you have mm -hmm. on, on this record is just phenomenal from top to bottom. But I was really surprised that you went with Adrian Cohen as, as the leading character uh what made her voice because i'm assuming that's the reason why you chose her what made mm -hmm. her voice the the right fit for that main leading character in the story um i mean the heart healer the main character uh are you know sometimes he's sad and some sometimes he's angry she, ha she has all these different kind of songs and and i mean i guess the other ones would make it too but Adrian really can sing in different styles. And if you notice in the first song, Awake, when she sings really, really soft, and then she goes up and up and up, and there she has no limits almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so she is really perfect for this. Yeah, she, she has a, a wide range that she can she can pull from. She's, in my opinion, she's a very underrated performer. I don't, I don't think she gets as much credit as she should get. But I thought that on this album, she was really able to show a lot of, of her tools. Do, do you feel like this is going to be an album that's going to bring her a little bit more to the forefront, that's going to give her a little bit more visibility? Maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, she has her own band that I think is quite successful, too. And uh, she sang in uh, at least live for Avantasia, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's not that unknown, but uh, of course, she's one of the best. So she should have all, all the attention she can get. Mm -hmm. But uh, and now she really shows, you know, some parts almost sounds like a news, Disney musical. And some, sometimes it sounds almost like, you know, she can sing like Dima Borger or something. And that's really, she didn't growl or scream or what you call it on this one so much, but, but uh, she really took those high pitch angry notes sometimes that I really love. I'm going to be honest with you. I was a little surprised that she didn't do that because I, I, I thought that that would extend her range even more because I know she can do it. Yeah. So I know it's it's part of her repertoire, if you will. So I was kind of waiting for one moment when she, when the character would get really angry and, and the yeah. growls would come out, but it didn't happen. Yeah, I, I was, was thinking about it. Uh, but when I discussed the singers with uh, Frontiers, they actually told me, yeah, with Adrian, Tell her not to growl too much or scream. <laughs> because they, they didn't want to have that sound. And I was, yeah. But it could be uh, uh, some parts that would work. Let's see on the next one. <laughs> uh, that was going to be my next question for you. Because I felt listening to this album that you told the story. But you kind of mm -hmm. left it a little bit on the cliffhanger at the end. It's not like the story feels like it's absolutely finished and mm -hmm. done with. Do you see yourself perhaps picking up where this album left off as far as the story is concerned and kind of like continuing with it in the future? Yeah, that's the, that's the plan, actually. Uh, I, 
I guess we have to wait and see after the release and see how it goes and everything. If the you know record co company want to spend some more money on it, and but it, I, I would guess that we would do a, another one and maybe a third too. Actually, I, I think the 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 success of this record is pretty much guaranteed. I I, I listened to this album yeah. and I have to tell you. I honestly have to be honest with you about this. I don't think I've heard an album recently that has the orchestration as good as it is on this record. It's cool. absolutely phenomenal. I don't know what you did, how you guys did it, but this album, taking the story, let's take the story out of the picture a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's take the same, just the orchestration alone on this record is something very unique because it really creates the sense of you watching a movie, even though you're just listening to it. It's like an audio book, but absolutely outstanding. What can you tell us about that orchestration and all the work that went into it? Yeah, first, that's great to hear because it was really the goal for me. I, I am, I'm a big fan of, you know, of, of soundtracks, Hans Zimmer and those guys. And when I watch a great movie, I, often I go back and just listen to the music and uh, I also listen to, to classical music. And, and uh, yeah, I, I had a year, uh, what was it? It wasn't last year, it was the year before that I, I didn't, I only worked on music and I didn't do anything else. Normally I teach guitar and stuff. And uh, then I had a couple of weeks in the end of the year or it was a month or something when I was done with everything. So I just sat down, listened to soundtracks and tried to learn and try to copy. And how do they do with the harmonies and how do the percussion come in and what, when I get goosebumps, what happens? What, what, are, what are they doing? Uh, and uh, I tried to learn that I, I wrote an intro. It's the first intro of the album, the Awake intro. I think it's two minutes or something. And I sent it to Frontiers, the record label. And I said, I, I want to do something like this. And within two minutes, I had an answer. Yeah, go for it. We <laughs> just do it. And uh, then I asked them, uh, this sounds great because the samples nowadays can sound, you know, almost like the real thing, if you know what you're doing. But I want to have real strings too. And they say, yeah, do it. So I uh, um, hired two uh, world-class orchestra musicians and uh, they put down some uh, cello and violin over the programmed orchestra. And I think that makes the last percent that makes it feel, you know, real. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's uh, can sound super with the just uh, samples and orchestra libraries, but that last percent that that it needs real people for that. That's one of the things that I noticed. Is like it felt like they were playing in my living room. It felt mm -hmm. organic. It felt real. Like th these are real people playing it. It, it didn't feel like you were just sitting behind the computer. And and it took the record. It took the experience of, of the story of the record to a whole new level. That's very cool to hear. And I also have to uh, give credit to uh, Simone Mularone that, that uh, mixed album, because that means a lot. How, how do you mix that orchestra stuff together with uh, a metal sound and make it sound good? Because I heard some albums, they have a great orchestra, they have a great metal band, but it's too much, so it's too much for the ears, and you can't really hear what's happening. Yeah, it gets, um, a, little, it gets a little murky sometimes. It gets muddy. Yeah, so, so that's, you have to think about that a lot in the arrangement, because you, of course you want it to sound big and powerful and epic, but if everything is big and powerful and epic at the same time, it's just chaos, you know, it's too- You have a lot of moving pieces on this record. You have the seven different singers, you have the orchestration, you have a structure of an album that feels like a movie that has the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, all of that stuff. You have the guitars, you have all, how do you balance out all of these moving pieces, put them together in a pot and allow the album to be so well defined? Who do you credit for that? I mean, it's a big part is in a, the arrangement and how I, write the songs and also uh, how the musicians play how i mean the drum feels is a big part if you have a big drum feel at the same time with with where's there a string run in the orchestra it, it would 
wouldn't work. And uh, the, the, the strings are great, the drum feel are great, but at the same time, it's shit. You, you, so you have to think about that. So uh, yeah, and it, so I guess it's also a bit of luck. <laughs> you know, you try stuff and sometimes it turns out great. And, and as I said, I work a lot on the demos. So already on the demos, I can hear will this work or not? So it's not like I get a finished album and I say, oh, this wasn't, I don't get so any surprises, you know, I already know what will happen. Uh, we've talked about the orchestration, we've talked about the lyrics, we've talked about the concept, but I think this is an album that also has incredible guitar playing. The, 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 for, the fan, for the fans of guitar playing, this album could almost be a, an instrumental because the guitar <laughs> playing is just outstanding. It's just, it's, it's the cherry on top of the cake. Uh, for, for those that haven't heard the album, how would you define the overall guitar sound and the guitar playing on this record? Uh, I have to say I adapt the guitar playing after the rest. So it's not that I have great riffs and great solos and make a song after the guitar. Uh, I start with the orchestra, melodies, vocal lines, uh, and then the guitars. So uh, in this album, I would say that the, the guitar takes this leftover space. <laughs> and uh, sometimes when I write for Primal Fear, for example, that's the opposite. That's the guitar, you know, the, the, main, the riff is first and everything. And uh, so it's a different way, um, but there is a lot of space. So there is solos almost in every song, I think, and the long solos and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a guitar player to play a lot of guitars, so <laughs> it's always like that. Was it key for you to have the guitars not just sound like heavy metal guitars, but have more of a neoclassic feel to it that matches more the opera style that the record has? Because I felt like the, the guitar sound uh, enhanced the experience that was coming from the orchestra and from the storytelling and from the vocalists. Yeah, I always try to follow the songs uh, um, even if I can shred and I like, you know, shred guitar players, I, I'll, I always try to think that one part of my guitar solo should be able, you should be able to sing it. So it's not the little all the time. You, 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 one melody that you can remember and uh, listen to it, like in Hamid, and then maybe some shred and impressive stuff, you know, because it's... <laughs> cool to have it but uh, I always try to follow the music because uh, the song is so much more important than a guitar solo if I have the worst song in the world but with the best guitar solo in the world I don't think you would like to listen to it you would feel this is crap you don't, wouldn't care that the guitar solo is good but the opposite if I have a really the the best song in the world, but but the bad guitar solo, you still would like it, and you wouldn't care so much if the guitar solo. So I, th I think the song is so important, and uh, the guitar solo is great too. To have the both worlds, that's the best. To have a great guitar solo, a great song, of course. That that's the dream, the the goal. I go, but it's not that important actually. And the rhythm guitar is more important to me because that's the sound of the song. If the rhythm guitar is heavy, you need that for the head banging. Or uh, if you don't have the good rhythm guitar, you would lose the metal feeling. It's not enough with uh, drums and orchestra. You, you must have that, you know, heavy rhythm guitar. You, you said it before that, that a lot of people have tried similar orchestration and, and, and bringing metal into a, an opera feel, but I, I feel like you finally discover the, 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 the gold. I mean, this is truly a metal opera in every sense of the word, when you think about how the album sounds, the story that you're telling, how everything comes together, do, do you see now this becoming perhaps a little bit of, of the roadmap to how a metal style opera driven record should sound like? I mean, it's my taste, it's my goal. I don't know if everyone agree. I'm very happy that you like it, but uh, I mean, there are other guys like, Avantasia, for example, they, they have a different, they, it, they call it a metal opera and it's great, but it's a different thing. It's more like one song, you can listen to one song and that's great. And you listen to the next one. This is more written, so you should listen to the whole thing, the whole album. You, you should take a, 
headphones, sit back, have an hour with no stress and a good drink and just listen. Um, that's the goal of this album. And uh, But uh, I have to say some, it could be that I started with the orchestra and I didn't start it with the metal songs and then added some orchestra because I know some bands work like that. Oh, now we have a great song. Let's add some orchestra. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's, it's a different sound if you start with the orchestra and then add the metal after. Maybe, I don't know. I think Dimmu Borgi does it very well. I think that they are one of the best to mix orchestra with metal. It sounds really good when they do. And I know they are often working with a real orchestra. So that's really cool. Makes a difference, makes a complete difference. I have one last question for you, and, and that is, of all the projects, all, all the albums that you've worked on, what has this album taught you or given to you that, that you haven't really gotten from a previous record? Yeah, I, I think I can be more free when I write. I don't have to think so much about a song has to be five minutes or four minutes. It doesn't matter if it's seven or eight uh, and uh, if I have an intro, that's two minutes. Or uh, if I skip, you know, I have two different verses, I think it still can be a great song. Uh, before I was a little, you know, the songwriting rules, it has to be like this and you have, you know, but now I, I skipped all the rules. I didn't care. I just wrote the thing that, you know, felt good. And now when I listen to it, that works too. So I, I, I think I can skip the rules. We don't need to have verse, chorus, verse, chorus always. And, and I know, you know, prog metal, they don't, they work like this forever. They, they don't care. They can have an instrumental five minutes in the middle of a song or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, go away from the rules and be more free when I write. It allows you to be more creative. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. Well, congratulations on this record. It's absolutely outstanding. I love it. Thank you very much. Uh, all the best with the release comes out March 12 on Frontiers, Heart Healer, the metal opera by Magnus Carlson. Thank you very much, Magnus. I really appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you. Great talking to you. Well, it was a pleasure. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.